Hey, is that folk music that you play there? What is that? How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Studs Terkel who asked Big Bill Brunzi, did he consider his blues music to be folk music? And Big Bill says, well, I never heard no horse <laughs> Horses sing none of it, ladies and gentlemen. And you, my name is Ralph Litwin, and you were just listening to Jim West and Good Company. And Good Company is Ed Rothman over there. Howdy, folks. On the guitar. <laughs> nice, welcome to the show, Eddie. Good to see you, Ralph. Yeah, Eddie and I have played in different bands together, and Eddie's a great square dance caller. Great. And uh, nice to have you on the show. It's nice to be here. Ralph. And next in line is uh, Judy Bubar. <laughs> Mother of the uh, <laughs> lovely and talented Akiri Bubar, who has appeared before on this show in the uh, Patrick Reagan Ensemble. And Judy's playing the uh, harmonicas in good company. And immediately to my side here is Mr. West. Hello, Jim Ralph. West. How you doing, Jim? Great. All right. <laughs> That'll blow the sound, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jim is uh, several times winner of the New Jersey Old Time Fiddle Championships held at the New Jersey Folk Festival years ago. Yeah, years ago. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you guys are uh, playing some of your originals and some old time music. And looks like having a good old time. Yeah. Except that last couple were a couple of French Canadian tunes. Uh huh. Old time French Canadian tunes. And I, I really like this. I got this flyer from you guys. 
<laughs> I really like this one line on here. See, beautiful woman levitated from ground by fiddle power. <laughs> Absolutely. Are we going to see that today? It goes right up. You won't believe Just it. Keep Folks, your eyes open. Your eyes will, <laughs> you don't want to miss not it. be deceived, and you will see some great levitation on this stage right here tonight. All right. So stay tuned. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be a natural lead into your next song here. Well, yeah, here's a song written by our friend Mark Schaefer of Morristown, New Jersey. And um, it's a song about a snake oil salesman named Honest Eddie. All right. Well, come on over, gents and ladies, don't be bashful, don't be shy. Yes, my name is Honest Eddie, I got what you want to buy. It's an ancient Indian potion guaranteed for young and old. It'll make you strong and healthy, cool your fever, cure your cold. If you step a little closer than the folks in back in here, there's a throttle in this bottle made to get yourself in gear. If you take it by the teaspoon, it'll cure most every ill. If you're chugging it by the bottle, it'll give you quite a thrill. Everybody ready, cause on his daddy's medicine shows in town. Get yourself a wealth of perfect health by laying your dollar down. It's for mumps and bumps and measles, it's for ringworm and for gout, kidney stones and broken bones, and to clean your insides out. If your joints are stiff and tired, it'll loosen up your knees. If you're bitching cause you're itching, it'll rid you of your fleas. Everybody ready, cause honest daddy's medicine shows in town. Get yourself a wealth of perfect health by laying your dollar down. If you're balder than a baby and your cranium is bare, you can slap it on your scalp and in the morning you'll have hair. You can use it as an ointment when your back will need a rub. You can use it in your kitchen when your floor will need a scrub. Everybody ready, cause honest daddy's medicine shows in town. Get yourself a wealth of perfect health by laying your dollar down. Everybody ready, cause honest daddy's medicine shows in town. Yeehaw! All right. <laughs> so we've got it here for you folks. Um, just dollar a bottle. Come on and pick it up any old time. We'll give you that number later. I need some of that stuff. For me. <laughs> Can I get some after the show? <laughs> I think we're all starting to need it these days, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to put you on the hot seat here, Jim, because uh, you're kind of the, the front man of this group in a way. I, I outweigh the others. So. You outweigh the others <laughs> combined. <laughs> so uh, you come from the Midwest originally, right? Yes, I come from Ohio originally. Uh huh. We don't call, we just use two syllables, Ohio. You don't move your lips. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what originally got you interested in playing the fiddle? Well, <clears throat> I played violin in high school orchestra and stuff, and then I didn't do anything for 25 years. And I came over here, and I went to a, an open stage once uh, about 1980 about 78 maybe, at the Folk Project, the Minstrel sh Coffee House. It's still being held in Basking Ridge. Uh -huh. And I looked at those people playing instruments and I said, gee, I could do that. And I pulled my <laughs> fiddle out of its case, its neck had fallen off. And it didn't really. <laughs> but um, I picked it up, put it back together, hired some guy to make it well, and I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to practice for a while before I got to uh, do something on it anyway. So uh, I always liked folk music in general. I, I used to go to sleep at my grandmother's house. I can still remember going to sleep to Vernon Dahlhart records, wow. the originals on uh, the old crackable vinyl. Or no, yeah. they weren't even vinyl. I think it was cellulose acetate or something like that. Wow. On the old. <laughs> 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 but uh, this is traditional American music, and um, it's really a great honor. We're proud to play it. Many people think that. Uh, American culture consists of Mickey Mouse and <laughs> rock and roll and such. And well, it does. That, that, that's 
part of American culture. He's got his Barney costume on tonight. <laughs> but um, some of the music we play and, and some of the feelings we evoke are some of the traditional folk feelings that um, you might feel stirring inside you when you listen, because this is um, American culture at its best. Or All whatever right. quality you may think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we should uh, tell folks out there watching how they can get in touch with uh, Good Company if uh, they want to find out where you're going to be playing or maybe book you to come and play at their party or something yeah, like that. Yeah, we do that. all sorts of things. Tree fellings, dog vaccinations, <laughs> auto lubrications. We, we once played for a diaper changing. We did. That's true. <laughs> we did. It was out at the Echo Lake Park. They, they, they saw these people way out. There was no crowd. Way out there, these two people doing a baby carriage. They came up, <laughs> sat down, changed the baby. <laughs> we felt it, but we're proud. We're proud to play traditional American music for traditional American diapers that day. All right. <laughs> Not the paper kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to take ourselves a little break for a public service announcement. We'll be right back with Horses Sing None of It and Good Company. Ah! <laughs> recent worldwide educational test, the United States didn't rank first, Korea, or second, Taiwan, or even third. Switzerland. It seems while the rest of the world raised their educational standards, Scotland, Slovenia, we didn't. Spain. So we came in 14th. The United States. And 14th. There's no place for our kids to be. Call 1-800-96-PROMISE, and we'll give you lots of ways to help our kids move forward again. Howdy, folks, and welcome back to Horses Sing None of It. My name is Ralph Litwin. We're here with Good Company, which is Ed Rothman, Judy Bubar, and Jim West, old friends here. And uh, we're going to do an old-time tune from, I don't know, the Appalachian Mountain region. I guess this came over, and people wrote all kinds of different verses to it, and a lot of people know this tune, and they know different choruses and different verses. It's all messed up in the folk tradition. <laughs> Called Old Joe Clark. Betsy Brown, rock, rock, old Joe Clark, I'm going to the town. Do it, Jim. <laughs> now old Joe Clark, he had a cat, he neither sing nor pray. Stuck his head in a buttermilk jar and watched his scenes away. Rock, rock, old Joe Clark, and the Betsy Brown. Rock old Joe Clark and I'll run to town. I never marry an old school teacher, tell you the reason why. She wrecked so many children, boys, make those children die. Rock, rock old Joe Clark, goodbye Betsy Brown. Rock, rock old Joe Clark, tomorrow I'm going to town. Betsy Brown, rock, rock, old Joe Clark, mom going to town. And I never met that other old waiter, tell you the reason why. Her neck's so long and stringy, boy, I feel she never die. Rock, rock, old Joe Clark, goodbye, Betsy Brown. Rock, rock, old Joe Clark, mom going to town. Hey! Every story in 
that house is filled with cherry pie. Rock, rock, old Joe Park, good about Betsy Brown. Rock, rock, old Joe Park, more I'm going to town. And I never met an old school teacher, tell you the reason why. She blows her nose on old cornbread, calls it pumpkin pie. Disgusting. Rock, rock, old Joe Park, good about Betsy Brown. Rock, rock, old Joe Park, more I'm going to town. Yes, yes. Yeah. That was the verses uh, from Uncle Dave making some of them, and other ones I don't know where I stole them from. <laughs> You're still making them. <laughs> I'm still making them up. <laughs> Ooh, now I'm exhausted. Well, glad to meet you. I'm Jim. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bad. I'm sorry I did that. <laughs> Gosh. Tell us about this next song, Jim. Well, this next song um, was one I wrote, actually. and. Um, I was lucky enough to uh, know my grandfather for, for about um, 10 years, my great-grandfather, I mean. He died wow. at 93. And uh, I don't remember very much about him, but he did show me a few things. And one of them, he showed me how to um, make a whistle out of a butternut tree. In the spring, yeah, about now, before the leaves come out, the sap comes up in the butternut trees and they get so loose that you can peel them right off and cut them in a certain way and put them back together and make a whistle out of it. Well, I don't remember how to do that, but I did put something in it about this, uh, in it, uh, about it in this song. All so, right. we'll see if I remember the words. <laughs> <laughs> Ready?
Thank you. Thank you. I love that song. I love that song. Thank you very much. And folks out there, if, if you love that song as much as I do, you might want to know that it's it's on a recording of the New Jersey Songwriter Circle called Exit 35. Exit 135. Exit 135. Right. I should know because I have Plus a song or minus 100. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well, they didn't calculate that one on a Pentium, did they? <laughs> no, I guess not. And uh, we should uh, give the number once again for good company. Uh, 609-882-5390 is where you can call Mr. West and uh, he can tell you how to get a hold of that recording or uh, where, to, where to come out and see these folks playing uh, or you bet. hire them for your uh, dog interment or any other occasion. <laughs> <laughs> so let's put you on the hot seat, Eddie. You got it. How did you first get interested in uh, playing music, being a bass man and singing and playing guitar and all that it, stuff? It so how it happens, I started out enjoying folk music when I was very young. I, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and um, my mother, when I was three and four years old, took me to a folk music series for children in the Brooklyn Public Library. And I saw guys playing banjos and teaching us how to jump down and spin around and pick a bale of cotton. And I, I started, started playing the banjo and the guitar and, and the bass. And I just came up and, and um, never stopped. I, I just love this, this kind of music. Got involved in um, dancing. Judy's going to do a little dancing. A little, oh, uh, levitation. I, I'm sorry. And, um, and I started getting involved in, in square dancing and... Um, realized what a joy it is just to, to get together on on a saturday night or a friday night and and play the music and have people dance to it and um, it, it's really traditional american fun and, and um, i haven't come up for air since i was three or four years old and, <laughs> and i hope i never do all right all right now how about you judy how did your interest in this all get started well about 10 years ago if you'd asked me how it would be doing this i would wouldn't have believed you <laughs> I had no idea whatsoever of really playing anything until Akire, uh, you know, the famous singing star, Akire. Um, <laughs> I know her well. Brought, yes. Uh, she brought me home a little bitty tiny harmonica. That's Judy's and, daughter, Akire Bubar. Uh, yes. Right. Uh, and, she, she, and I started playing this. And I, one day I realized it had an octave on it. And then, like, the next morning I heard on, uh, I had the classical music station turn on and as I was getting up I heard him say that many great masterpieces are played within a range of five notes and I said well heck I've got eight of them <laughs> so I went I went to town and before I was done I could play at least 28 little things on there wow. uh, including uh, uh, Beethoven's Ode to Joy actually as a matter of fact <laughs> wow and um, then by that Christmas uh, the kids got together and they got me a, a chromatic harmonica so, you know, they thought they would look nice. They had the button on. Uh -huh. So that's how it started. And, uh, I was like wondering, I said, what's that button for, Jim? Uh, that's for sharps and flats. It's, th this is really exactly like a piano keyboard. Uh, Ralph has the harder kind. He has notes missing in his. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I didn't know that. Exactly. That's the trouble. <laughs> this one has them all there. They're all the sharps and flats are all there. So uh, if you're piano keyboard oriented, uh, then this is a very good harp for you, maybe. Well, I'm going to grab my guitar because we have just enough time left, I think, to do our last number that we plan. I'd like to thank you all for coming on Horses Sing None of It and sharing your music with us. Thank you, Ralph. And uh, a pleasure to have you. Is and this where I dance? This, this is <laughs> where <laughs> you're going to levitate, is it now? Judy. Is this is the time? This is the is one. It? Okay. you got to watch this. You watch both ends of her because <laughs> she's going to dance and play the harmonica at the very self same time. <laughs> That's why we're doing it last, so I don't pass out. <laughs> <laughs> don't, forget, right. don't forget to spit out your gum first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shucks, okay. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs>
Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so I rise, I rise, I rise. I've had the same friends since I was a little kid, but this year, some of them started playing with these other kids. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's cool making new friends and all, but they weren't like us. They were, you know, different. And I heard my big brother saying some pretty bad stuff about people like them, but they seemed pretty cool, and we had a pretty good time. So, well, maybe my brother doesn't know everything. Hey, Cole!